Okay, so the topic that I'm going to be talking about is the AI in education. Who are you? My name is Daniel, and I'm going to be talking about AI in education. So the first thing that I want to talk about is where this AI is coming from. So let's talk about a bit of history. Uh, in 1950, Alan Turing created the first machine that had some kind of intelligence because he was able to do something with just a bit of data. Then we go to the Thermal Conference in 1956 when they decided that the AI was something that can be talked about. There was a subject that needed to be studied. In 1966, the creation of ELISA, which was a chatbot that you can download it in your computer. Well, it was quite okay at that time. But you can answer simple questions with some data that was already input into the code. Uh, in 1997, the Deep Bloom uh, program was able to defeat the test champion of all time. So he, he was winning seven times in a row for seven years. and. It defeated quite easily. In 2011, in on live, there was a program called Job Fire B, and in that program, the ABM program called Watson was able to defeat uh, the champion again on this game. That was a winner three three programs in a row, and he defeated it quite easily. Um, it gets me to the point that I want to get you to, which is OpenAI GPC, which I think you all know what I'm talking about, chat GTP, GPT. Uh, the section three was opened in 2020. But what's, what is actually AI? Wait, uh, I don't know what I did. Okay, yeah. What is actually AI? So AI is the technology that is available in the machines nowadays that allows you to do stuff that usually would need some human intelligence behind it. So it, it also allows the technology to learn from the input. So each time it is growing and growing because it, you can, it learns from itself. So each mistake that it is going, to, it, it is going through, it will learn from it. I uh, would like to talk about some models of AI in education. So I think if you are a foreigner, you will know Duolingo, which is an app that helps you study other languages. Uh, it has more than 40 languages on it. And it has some speech recognition, grammar recognition. It helps you to improve the languages. Babbler is a, a web, it's a, it's a software that allows you to learn some basic knowledge in mathematics in, and English literacy. New ones is a software created uh, in 2020 that has some speech recognition to help you improve your English. So it allows you to improve your pronunciation just from the way you speak. It, it, it will tell you how to pronounce it correctly. It will even tell you the position of the tongue and the mouth for you to pronounce everything correctly. Newton Alta. Newton Alta is a software that is created for college and high level education. It will allow you to do some tests in order to know where you have some gaps and it will give you some assi assignments and exercise that are focusing to you learning that specific topic. Uh, Clinch Learning, or I don't know how to pronounce that one, is another platform that allows some students with problems with math, English, and English pronunciation uh, to help you improve and is focusing to people that is uh, in an advanced stage of other languages and in an advanced stage of maths. So it will tell you how to do specific operations. Uh, and let's talk about ChatGTP, which is the one that I'm gonna focus more into. Basically, my objective with this one is if I was avail if I was able to create a whole essay with only using ChatGPT, 
The whole thing is started because I was frustrated. I didn't know what to talk about. So the first thing that I did is ask it if it could give me some topics related to technology to talk about. So I was like, okay, if this one can give me some topics to talk about, can it develop the topic furthermore? So I asked it to give me a 500 word essay uh, with the topic that I choose from the list that it gave me already. And it created a quite good essay. The thing that uh, it gave me, it could be used for if I, if I wanted to talk about that topic specifically because it was quite concise. Then I thought, if I can do this, can I actually do a whole essay that is related to university? Then I started changing the parameters and I started asking them to give me all the info, the, the references that it, was, that it was using. And it gave me quite a lot of information. So I was surprised that I was getting to the point where you can get all the information you needed for an essay. I also changed the whole thing into telling me I need a 2,000 word essay, I need this and that, I need these three topics, I need, I need all the parameters that the essay needed, and it gave me not as much as I thought it was give, gonna give me, because to this point I was really impressed that it was giving me a lot of information, but it gave me a lot of uh, information and references that I could use if I wanted to talk about that topic. So, what are the, the disadvantages of this. So basically, obviously, the learning that you're gonna be doing is not accurate, because the machine that you're using is doing all the, all the things that you need it. It's not giving you any, it's not helping you to learn if you don't use it correctly. All right, so if you are using it in the wrong way, and you don't change it, or you don't use it just to give you some idea, you will get caught. <laughs> <laughs> Turnitin is going to be there to tell you that you copy it from ChatGCP because that's ChatGPT because now it is available for Turnitin. It tells you when it is being used. So don't do it, guys. Uh, then uh, I want to talk about my conclusion. The conclusion is that ChatGPT and all the AIs are just tools. Uh, do you believe that tools were made for you to use it? But the ones that you decide if they are good or bad is yourself. The way you use it. A knife, you can use it to cut food, to create a marvelous food. But it can also be used to kill. So it depends on you and how, how worthy it is for you to use this instead of using your own mind to create a piece of work that will help you to work on the things that you actually want. The method that I use in this one Obviously, it was the Agile method, because I needed to change all the times along, along the way that I was working. I needed to change every single thing that I was doing to see if the AI was able to give me all the information needed. So I was to go, have to go back and forth, back and forth, to see if it was able to give me some accurate uh, things. Uh, at the end, I discovered that ChatGTP only gives you about 700 words. So you're not able to <laughs> go farther than that, so it is impossible to go there. And that's it. Thank you very much. And if you've got any questions. Any questions? No. No. No, it's fine. Thank you. Nice, that's it.